Junker is an awesome Gerslauer Infinity Coaster at Powerland in Finland. Junker is the park's best attraction, and it's now one of my favorite launch coasters, as the ride has a satisfying and diverse layout featuring three inversions and a bevy of forces. So in this video, I will be reviewing Junker. In 2015, Powerland opened Junker, which was advertised to be the most thrilling coaster in Northern Europe. This would be the third Gerstlauer Infinity Coaster and the second ever with a launch. The coaster's name is in reference to a type of plane, but it doesn't really have any theming outside of a single plane along the launch track, but I do like how Junker looks. The coaster is green track and I love how it interacts with the park. The launch runs along the midway, the top hat goes directly over the midway, and the inversions have amazing near misses. The finished loop wraps around a bridge, the dive loop goes through an underground tunnel, and the zero G roll winds over the entrance to a Mexican restaurant. The other unique thing about this coaster's appearance is the coaster next door. In 2020, Powerland opened Pitt Special, another coaster themed after a plane. But what's odd about what Powerland did is that Pitt Special is the exact same ride model with the exact same paint scheme and the exact same trains. In fact, when Pitt Special is being built, many thought the Junker was being extended. Compare that to the Cedar Fair parks that have two B&M hypercoaster models. Those parks made an effort to distinguish the two coasters by using different trains, different themes, and different paint schemes. So while Powerland's approach was unconventional, it does make for a cool visual as you approach the park, and you see these two coasters that appear to be one giant one. Junker's queue line is in the back corner of the park. The queue line consists of an outside series of ramps and one switchback in the station. Now the weird thing about this queue line, and several others of Powerland, is that you have these paddles in each switchback, so you sort of have to weave side to side as you move up through the queue. I'm not sure if these were added for distancing during COVID, but they were an odd quirk found in several rides. Junker was running just two trains, each seating eight riders, so I was a bit nervous what this coaster's throughput would be. I visited on a weekday towards the end of their summer season, and the coaster had a minimal wait all day. Even when the line was halfway down the outside ramp, I never had to wait more than 15 to 20 minutes for Junker, and for the first hour, it was a total walk-on. The crew was almost always ready to dispatch a train once the prior one completed the course. Part of that is how easy the restraints are to check on this coaster. Junker has no seatbelts and just a clamshell lap bar restraint. The staff does tend to push these down really hard, but that seems to be the standard operating procedure with most of the Gerstlauer Eurofighters and Infinity coasters with this type of restraint. I do enjoy these restraints because you have no trouble experiencing the ride's forces even when the restraint comes down far and your entire upper body is free. In terms of seat selection, the front and back rows felt identical to me in terms of forces. The front was a little bit better for the unobstructed view. Honestly, I had a bigger preference towards riding on the left side of the train. The final two inversions were a bit better on that side. Once dispatched, you roll out of the station and go down the small, unbanked, curving drop. The drop gives a tiny pinch of laterals but then all of a sudden, you are violently jolted forwards. The train engages the LSM launch with no hesitation. If you have experienced any of these Gerstlauer LSM launches, you know they pack in a lot of power. And the one on Junker is no different. You accelerate to 65 miles per hour, or 105 kilometers per hour, in less than two seconds. Just to put the launch power in perspective, I rode Taiga the day before, and after I rode Junker. I was more impressed by Tiger's launches before I rode Junker. Junker's launch is that strong. It packs a wallop and it will pin you in the back of your seat. You then rise up into the 131 foot or 40 meter tall top hat, and this transition delivers a decent burst of positive G's, which will be a common occurrence on this ride. Junker is forceful. The top hat offered a very cool and sustained airtime moment. It has two distinct moments of good ejector airtime, broken up by a little bit of floater airtime. You get launched out of your seat going up. You then stay levitated out of your seat as you're cresting the apex of the top hat. And then you get vaulted even higher on the descent. 
and it's even wilder going down because you get some great laterals as you twist to the side. The pullout delivers another solid dose of positive G's and then you rise up into the finished loop. This is a dive drop immediately followed by this elongated vertical loop. The initial rise in the finished loop delivers weak but very sustained floater airtime, and you stay out of your seat for the entirety of the dive loop. While the airtime strength doesn't increase on the drop, the laterals and whip on the descent are insane. Junker tries to horizontally eject you from the train. The whip is more pronounced on the left side of the train, which is one of the reasons I prefer to ride on that side. That's followed by what feels like the most forceful pullout on the ride. Junker pulls 4.5 positive G's, and I suspect this is where it occurs because I always started to gray out here. I regained my vision at the top of the elongated loop where I was then getting some nice hang time. This is one of several elements that really make you appreciate the lap bar only restraints. The other cool thing about the finished loop is the visual of wrapping around this elevated bridge. You almost always see guests standing beneath you watching Junker in awe. The coaster has a real presence. You then rise up into the mid-course brake run, which did not slow the train down one bit. This led to an equally crazy second half. The twisting plunge off the brake run is pretty steep, so it offers a good pop of ejector airtime paired with even more laterals. You then whip around an overbank. Now in the morning, this element was a dud, but once the coaster warmed up, the element became moderately snappy. Junker then navigates this aggressive S-hill. You get some decent floater airtime yet again, paired with very strong laterals. Then comes the dive loop, which offers some solid hang time at the start. This hang time is a little more sustained on the left side of the train, and then the descent throws you to the side. I love how almost every drop in this coaster offers laterals to some degree. The pullout then goes through the aforementioned underground tunnel, which is a neat visual, and you also get another dose of strong positive G's on that pullout. Junker then coasts through the final inversion, a zero G roll. On the left side of the train, I got a few seconds of sustained hang time with a tiny handle of laterals. On the right side of the train, the hang time was a little less pronounced, but the element did feel a tad snappier, so it just comes down to personal preference. Junker then winds around a helix over the water. This element had no force in the morning, but it had a tiny bit of g-forces by the end of the day. You then hit the brake run, ending the 2,822 foot or 860 meter long coaster. Junker tracks pretty well. The ride is comfortable thanks to the lap bars, but the train does have a little shimmy at points. This is something that plagues a lot of Gerslauers. Now it didn't really detract from the ride experience for me, but you'll definitely notice it at points. So what would I rate Junker? I would give this coaster a 9 out of 10. Junker is a fantastic ride. This coaster is very little wasted track. Most elements deliver laterals with either hang time or air time, and then the transitions in between elements pile on the positive G's. Plus you have that intense launch at the start. Junker is just a very forceful and exciting ride. The coaster reminded me of a more forceful monster at Adventureland, except you have a launch instead of the beyond vertical drop. Junker is easily my favorite ride at Powerland, and I think it's one of the best coasters ever designed by Gerslauer. The only one I prefer is Karnan. So those are my thoughts on Junker, the incredible launch coaster at Powerland. Have you ridden this coaster? What are your thoughts about this ride? I would love to hear what you think down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there will be a lot more roller coaster and music park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.